Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel this morning. I'm here in the raw, no makeup, but I know you probably don't care. So what I want to bring to you this morning is probiotic art. And just like baking is an art, cup making is an art, pen making is an art, making probiotic foods is an art. And it's an art that I have been working on for probably 15 or 20 years. Um, I love probiotic foods is a passion that I have because I like to help people to be healthy. I'm a nurse. I like to help people to do things that make them healthy. And no matter what diet you're on, no matter what culture you live in, no matter where in the world you are, you need probiotic foods of some type. And uh, we've been incorporating probiotic foods into our diet for several years off and on and different ones here and there. I want to talk about the trilogy of probiotic foods. And um, uh, if you're looking for more information than what you'll get in this video, Donna Schwenk has, she is like the guru of probiotic foods in my opinion. And I'm gonna put a link to her channel below so you can check out everything that she does because she's where I go over the years. But the trilogy of probiotic foods is um, kombucha. I, I, I'm reusing a bottle, but this is my own kombucha. And I have scobies that I've had for years and years and years. I, the scobies I've had, I've probably had for 10 years. <laughs> Kombucha, vegetable cultured foods. So you could make sauerkraut, which actually I have a very, very good sauerkraut recipe. There's, there's hardly any views on it. And it's probably the best sauerkraut I have ever had in my whole 57 years of living because it tastes like dill pickles. I mean, who doesn't like dill pickles? Even people that don't like sauerkraut never ever would try it. If you put it on their hot dog or something, they wouldn't even know it was sauerkraut. It tastes like dill pickles. Uh, the way that I get my fermented vegetable in is um, beet kvass. And I'm about to release a video on beet kvass. And we drink this every single morning, my whole family, well, except for my oldest son, because he's at that age where he doesn't want anything mom makes anymore. That's okay, we forgive him. But beet kvass, very easy. And then lastly, but most importantly, in my opinion, is kefir. Kefir, like yogurt on steroids. Get it at your nearest grocery store or home make it. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you actually how I make kefir because my kefir grains are ready to be strained. But kefir is just so yummy and creamy and so healing to the gut. Probiotic foods keep your gut healthy. So it's my goal for myself and my family to drink from all three of these every single day. That gives the most variety of beneficial bacteria into your gut and improving your immune system. Consistency is the key. If you're not interested in learning the art of fermentation, then just go buy them in the store. They might not be as potent of a probiotic as these are, but it's better than not, not eating any of them. So I'm going to show you how I make my kefir. So this one is done and this one's ready to drink. And actually my mouth is watering looking at it. So I, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna kefir up. <laughs> it's tart, it's tangy, it's, uh, it's really good. Once you start drinking it, you'll crave it. That one was strawberry. You have to have kefir grains to make kefir and I will show them to you once I strain them. But this kefir, you can see is kind of starting to separate right there. Can you see that, Kaden? Can you see like it's kind of looking a little, you can see it, okay. So the top half of this is starting to separate. And if I left it for a few more hours, you would see the whey actually, the whey will like separate in the middle and then it kind of goes down to the bottom and you'll have a layer of whey and then you'll have a layer of like the kefir on top. But I don't want to let it get that, um, fermented because it's, it's kind of strong then and I just feel like it making it right now. Um, one of the reasons, let me just, let me just take an interjection here, okay. Uh, I think that kefir is probably the um, hardest long term to continue making and that's because it's something you have to take care of every day. Like beet kvass, I can do it once every two weeks or even sometimes once a month. Uh, kombucha is like once 
a week or once every two weeks you have to take care of it but kefir you really have to take care of every day but i have learned over the years to make kefir and put it in the refrigerator and every almost everywhere that i look they really don't recommend putting your kefir in the fridge and making refrigerator kefir but I have found that if I don't have that option, I stop making it because the, the grains grow. And then next thing you know, your kefir, your kefir is ready like in 12 hours and you still have kefir to drink. And so then you start, you have so much kefir that you just stop making it because you can't consume it as quickly. So I think that's the biggest obstacle to overcome in making kefir. And I think I have figured out the trick as to how to overcome that obstacle. So I'm a nurse, I work 12 hour shifts, and if I'm working two 12 hour shifts, which I did the last two days, I didn't make kefir. So when the day before I went back to work, I made my kefir and I, I put the grains in the jar and I filled it up with the milk and I put it in the fridge. And then this morning, I, I left it in there for two days while I was at work. I've left it in there for weeks. I've left it in there for probably even a couple of months, which isn't healthy, because then you have to like, it, for your kefir grains to wake up and start producing quality kefir, it takes about a week. Um, but it's not impossible. If you have kefir grains in the fridge, don't throw them away. Just wake them up, feed them every day for about three days, and then you'll notice your kefir will start kicking in again. So what I do is I, I put my kefir in the fridge when I'm working or when I'm not motivated to make kefir right now. I just don't want to make it right now. Life's too busy. I'll put my kefir in the fridge with fresh milk and I'll just leave it there. And, um, so you can do that. Don't let anybody tell you you can't because I've been doing that for years and years and years with these same grains, these same grains. Um, so, but anyway, that's the biggest obstacle to overcome in making kefir is you can just get backed up and you're not drinking it and the next thing you know, you just stop. So I don't want you to stop. I want you to keep making it. And that's how you do it. Just put it in the fridge and take it out. Put it in the fridge and take it out. Um, so this kefir is ready to be strained, all right? Uh, I'm gonna, I have this strainer that I bought at Walmart and I, I, all the strainers that I have found, this is the one that I've always used and always gone back and bought be, uh, because it's like got holes in it or whatever. I've been making kefir for years and years. So this is the one that I like the most. It's just got plastic bottom and they recommend that you don't use metal for kefir. So, so I don't, I just don't. So I put that in there and then I just pour my kefir in there. I kind of hold it up because if it's, you know, I don't want it to go around the leak, seep over the blender edge. I could have poured it in more slowly too. And I'm pouring it right into my blender because I'm gonna blend fruit right into it. So why dirty another vessel? So that's, that's my theory. And then I have this rice spoon, which I love this rice spoon for, I don't even use it for rice because I don't really eat rice. I love it for making kefir and other things. Oh, when I make my um, my keto bread, I use it for that. It's such a good shape, you know? It just fits into everything so well. Anyway, so what I do is I just, I just keep scooping around to just separate the kefir grains from the cream. And sometimes I let it go too long and it's all curdly. It's all curdled and, and if you work at it with this spoon, you'll separate the curds from your curdled milk if you've let your kefir sit too long. And there we go. So I have this nice wad of kefir grains left. Now I have my vessel to put this back in and I'm not gonna clean it because there's, there's good stuff in here. You know, I'm just gonna leave that like that. Uh, when you, one of the problems also that I see with making kefir is that the grains, they get to a point where they multiply so quickly that it ferments your kefir so quickly. And then you're like, oh my goodness, I have kefir again and I don't have anybody who's gonna drink it. So when it gets to that point where your, your, your grains are multiplying almost every time you strain it, you have more grains, I have a trick for you. I have a friend who told me one time she had so many kefir grains, she would just like throw them away and I'm like, what? Oh my goodness, what a crime to throw away your kefir grains. I told her at least give them to your dog. Kefir grains have been thought, now I'm not making any medical claims or anything, but have thought to be like 
cancer fighting, tumor fighting. I, they're so good for you. At least give them to your dog, right? Or give them to a friend to make their own batch of kefir. But I told her, give them to your dog. So I don't know if she ever did or not, but I'm not gonna give my precious kefir grains to my dog. I'm gonna give them right here to this tummy right here. So, <laughs> so this is what I do. I have probably in here a quarter cup of kefir grains and I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna pull off about this much, which I also pulled off the same amount yesterday. And this is what I do. Mom. I just take them like I'm swallowing a gigantic handful of pills and much better than a bunch of pills for you. And now I still have enough for my kefir over here. I put this in my jar to restart my next batch. And my grains are at the point where they're multiplying and growing very quickly. So like I would say almost every other time I refill my jar, I have like a teaspoon of kefir grains that I just swallow. Um, so my kefir, is in, my, my kefir grains are in there. And I'm just gonna fill this up. I don't like to fill it up all the way. I fill it up about two thirds because when it, the milk starts to get thick, it does separate and the curds rise. They get kind of airy and then it leaks all over my counter. I don't like to do that. So this is done. This is gonna go over on my counter. The milk that I used is just organic whole milk. And you can use organic 2% or, or whatever milk you want, but you do have to let your grains adjust to it. It might be kind of watery, but it's still kefir, even if it's kind of watery. But this is the milk that I like to use. I like to use whole milk because I like it to be creamy and thick. And I, I'm not afraid of that um, fat from whole milk. So I'm gonna put this on the counter until tomorrow and tomorrow morning, or if tonight, uh, I would see if I saw it separating and getting really thick tonight, I would know to leave it for tomorrow would be too long because it would be all curdly, salvageable, but curdly, I would put it in the fridge until I was ready to take care of it. But right now I'm gonna put it on the couch. Having trouble sleeping at night? Take Kiefer, helps you sleep. <laughs> I take my Kiefer in and out of the fridge all the time. If I see that it's almost ready, and I know I'm not gonna have time to make kefir right now. I'll just put it in the fridge. And then when I wanna make it, I'll just take it out of the fridge and strain it and uh, do what I need to do with it. Refeed it and put it back on the counter or in the fridge, just depending. So now I have my kefir here. So Ooh. this is fermented one time. I like to ferment my kefir twice. And my favorite way of fermenting my kefir is to put, or, or to making my kefir is to put frozen strawberries in here, a couple of scoops of sugar-free sweetener that I like, and then blend it. And then I'll, I'll pour it into, that quart size jar makes two of these, one for Caden and one for me because my husband will absolutely not have anything to do with kefir. <laughs> oh well. So it'll make two of these, one for Caden, one for me, and I'll just kinda sip on it. I took one to work yesterday, and before I went into the unit, I drank half of it. And then I drank the other half, just kind of when I felt like it in the afternoon. Caden, I think, sits down and drinks his all at once, don't you, Caden? Yeah, he, he likes to just, when he's on in the nighttime playing with his friends online, he'll just sit there and drink his kefir when he wants something sweet. So, unfortunately, I have no frozen strawberries to do this step because my husband's getting them at the grocery store. So, all I'm going to do is I'm going to put the lid on this and it's going to sit out on the counter until he gets home. Then I'll put in some strawberries and some sweetener and I'll blend it and I'll pour it into two of these. And then it'll sit on the counter again. Uh, this one sat out overnight. I, I did this step yesterday, last night, after I got home from work. And I left two of these jars on the counter overnight. Actually, Caden drank, Caden drank his right away. I left mine on the counter overnight to ferment overnight again. And it gets really bubbly and fizzy. When you open it, it goes, <laughs> Let me do that again. If you're interested in learning the art of fermentation, I would be so happy to help answer any questions that you have, any encouragement. A lot of people are scared and nervous over trying to ferment things because of the unknown. I don't know, does this look okay? Is this yeast bad? Is this color okay? I don't know, I don't wanna poison myself and die because we think we're gonna, we're gonna die from eating fermented foods. But uh, 
it is an art that you need to spend time learning and growing. And, um, and I'm here for you if you want to do that. Please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. I don't want to be a nurse forever. Please like my video. I appreciate that too. Give me a thumbs up. Hit the notification bell. Ding. I would appreciate that too. I have more videos coming. And uh, I really appreciate you taking your time to watch me talk. <laughs> or to listen to me talk. And uh, God bless you. Have a great day.